Welcome in to Moving the Chains, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside John Epps. We've got Jarrell Hendricks back on the board as always here for our Week 10 South Carolina High School Football Preview Show. John, you know, typically Week 10 ends the regular season. we got playoffs, but not this year. we got one more week next week due to the, the extension from Hurricane Helene. So we, we still have a lot of region titles, playoff stuff on the line this week, but we'll have some next week as well. But still, it should be a fantastic week. We had, you know, we picked five corner games of the week, probably could have gone six, seven, eight if we had to. Just a loaded week here in week 10. Yeah, and it, it will be the regular season finale for a lot of schools as well. Um, a lot of the Midland schools will be wrapping up their season. Some of them already done and waiting for uh, playoffs to begin. So there's a lot on the line. For those that are playing this week, and you know, for a lot of teams, it's you know what you got to do at this point um, for a region title or to get into the playoffs. No doubt about it. As always, guys, follow us here on Facebook, on Twitter slash X, on Instagram, YouTube, and more at Moving Chains. M O V I N C H A I N S. Our website, MovingChains.com. Our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. We do a weekly preview show live here on Facebook and YouTube Tuesday nights about seven fifteen or so. Talk through the biggest games in the state. Talk through the whole slate. So hopefully you will join for join us for that, not only tonight, but in the future as well. Our recap show comes out Sunday nights, typically on the podcast platforms. We have coach interviews, player interviews, lots of really good stuff throughout the week as well, content pieces for that. Get your Moving the Chains merch. If you would, please get your Richardson hats. we got some gray ones, some black ones. We've got another black one up here, as you see there. You can email mtcgear.sc to make your purchase today. You can hit us up on social media as well. Some toe boggins for those cold weather Playoff games. We've got some great T-shirts in stock. We've got a black T-shirt, a gray T-shirt, a navy blue, also a pink for the ladies, too. Get your T-shirts right now, um, and also the hoodies for those cold weather games. You know, I wore mine. I actually didn't wear one last Friday, surprisingly, John, but I did wear a T-shirt, man. Uh, really good, high-quality stuff here. We just sent some out to our buddy Tyler. I think his came in this week. He was telling me uh, yesterday he got it in the mail. It looks great. So definitely order your hoodies, a white one, a gray one. Uh, lots of great stuff here for MTC. Love to have you guys supporting the brand. Uh, do want to shout out a couple of friends of the program. The Darlington Falcons, Coach Jamie Johnson. Got a nice Darlington hat up here in the studio, and I appreciate that. And also our friends at PD Academy. Some Golden Eagles gear. Got a hat last week from them as well. So definitely shout out to them for hooking us up, helping us make the the, the set look a little bit better, I guess you could say there, John. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Good looking hats. <laughs> no doubt about it. Well, guys, if you want to talk about your team, want to talk about the game, feel free to comment. Love to hear from you. Jarrell will be working those on the backside. But, John, let's start now with our Carolina Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associates Games of the Week, our Kona Games of the Week, five of the biggest ones across the state. Let's start with a region title. How about that? Oh, yeah. Down in 1A, a fantastic ball game on the horizon here. We have the Lamar Silver Foxes at 7-2 and two, traveling to Richburg, taking on the Louisville Lions at 8-1. and one. Lamar, last week, big over C.A. Johnson, 49-16. to 16. Louisville, that offense started clicking here lately, John, 52-7 to seven over Great Falls. The Silver Foxes averaging 42 on offense, 14 on defense. The Lions, 35 on offense, 10 on defense. This is going to be a heavyweight fight here for that region title. Yeah, it's going to be a really good one. I, you know, I think Louisville is really playing better ball at the beginning of the season. They're still playing awesome football. They're still playing great. Um, Lamar, I feel like, has picked up their level of play um, here in the back end of the season. Early on in the you know, early on in the year, I would have definitely picked Louisville in this game. Now, I'm not so sure. I, I think this is going to be a, a, a great ball game between these two. I think Louisville's a little bit of the better team, though, and they're at home here. I like Louisville on this one. Uh, I think it's going to be a really, really good ball game. Would not be surprised if Lamar wins this. Uh, they're going to be right there at the end um, come playoffs as well. Last week for the Sewer Foxes, running back Nigel Eady, five rushes, 94 yards, two touchdowns for him, also 34 receiving yards for Eady. Quarterback Zori Pierce makes him go, man. A kid that suffered an injury late last year is back now playing good football for them. Zoom Jackson, the playmaker out wide, 107 total yards, two touchdowns. Dating back to last season, John, they've won seven straight road games. The Foxes wow. have. You know, obviously, oh, cool. Lamar wins a lot of games in general, but seven row on the road is pretty impressive. For Louisville, quarterback Zach Rogers. I mean, the thing with Louisville, John, is we've been high on this team now for, I guess, two or three years in a row. We, when Coach Bullware got there, he had a bunch of young talent, and we've heard these guys 
for two years play yeah. great football. Now with Zach Rogers and Peanut Harris and Jordan Strong and Ja Howes and Tay Robinson, Ethan Shipman up front, J.B. Buchanan, Elijah Baker on the backside, along with Tymon Hughes, there, a defensive back. I mean, two really, really good football teams. And I think, you know, I, I've been more impressed with Lewis Felt the last three weeks than I had in the middle of the season. I feel like, okay. you know, they kind of popped up with that. After that C.A. Johnson game where we saw them in person, they didn't play their best football that day. But since then, Lee Central, Mac being great falls. It's like the offense really has came alive. So it scored 52 in a row the last two weeks, looking really good on that side of football. And Lamar is a team that I think just kind of has been, you know, hanging out, flying under the radar. You know, they had the two tough losses early to Darlington and then to Central by two points. But they've been just blowing guys out since that point. A team that, you know, is not, has not been high in the, in the 1A polls. I think you're finally starting to get some recognition. I mean, I, I can't wait for these two guys to, to square off on Friday night because getting that one seed is always huge. Yeah, and these are two really good offenses too. Uh, I, I don't know what's going to take precedent in this game. They both play good defense as well. They're just really good teams. I have a feeling, though, we're going to see more offense than defense in this ball game. Um, and again, I, in my opinion, I think Lamar's playing better football. Um, I think overall they're playing better football right now than Louisville is. I think Louisville might be a little bit better of a team though. Uh, this is going to be a whale of a game here. Yeah. I, I like the explosiveness of the Lions a lot. You know what they can do with the big passes and the big runs. They can really just, you know, bust a big one at any time. But I think Lamar, man, something's going on with Coach Burst and the boys. They're playing good football right now. Are, are you leaning Louisville at home? Is that what you're thinking? I'm leaning Louisville. I think I may go Lamar on, on the road. Uh, I like but it. I think it's going to be a, a tight ball game, man. A, a fantastic football game here at 1A. This is going to be a great one. You know, one of those years where I feel like Lamar every couple of years goes from lower to upper and upper to lower state. Yeah. Both, both being the upper state now. Uh, the upper state in 1A feels loaded also, by the way. But Extremely. I like the Silver Foxes here in a close one, but should be a, a hard-hitting physical matchup on Friday night. Uh, Jarrell, comments from you, comments from the chat. I mean, because this game, this is a massive game here. I'm just going to flat out say, I don't know. Like, this one is <laughs> tough. I mean, I hey, mean, hey, I've gone hey, back hey, and uh, forth. I'll put this there, too. We don't know either, Jarrell. We don't. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, I've gone back and forth with these two teams. I mean, these are two great programs, obviously. You know, Lamar's got a little bit more history there. But, I mean, they are fantastic teams. These are teams that are playing very good football right now, both of them. You've seen Lewis will get the offense really going. Mm -hmm. Again, once Lamar got out of that murderous row of, of a non-region slate, they've been killing teams the same. So I'm going to go a slight advantage to Lewisville, and I'm strictly doing it because they're playing at home. Like yep. other than that, that's I'm just going to give them that advantage. They get the three points uh, for playing at home, and that's just what it is. Um, would not be surprised if either one of these teams win. Should be a whale of a game there in Richburg. Uh, but we will get some some comments rolling here. We got lots. Yeah, as I say, you know, and two great coaching staffs too. I, I mean, love what you know, Coach Burst is doing at Lamar, and then Usher, Coach Usher there at Louisville too. Year one for him has got those guys rolling here and peaking at the right time. It feels like. Yeah, yeah, there's been no drop off of Louisville, that's for sure. Perfect. What do we have? We got Kevron saying good evening. Good to see you, Kevron. Appreciate you being here. We'll got to talk about great here in a little bit. Chris, good having you in here, man. Thank you for joining us, joining us uh, tonight. Bias cars that start the best team in two ways. TDs last week. Hey, we got a big two A matchup coming up here in a little bit in our call of games of the week. We'll get to that one here shortly. Danger said, "Let's go hot ticket number two versus number five for number one playoff spot in region title." Exactly right, man. It's going to be a fantastic <laughs> game. Like honestly, these are, are two obviously two top five teams. I mean, they're both fantastic football teams. Going to be a great matchup on Friday. Chris says, "Who in Lower State can beat Daniel or Westside for a state title?" Not by chance to actually beat one of the upstate teams. You know, we'll get to 4 a here in a little bit. A couple guys, obviously South Florence and Hartsville are both surging right now. It feels like two teams being to look out for. Uh, but I think about that one for a minute. Anthony says a lot going on this week. Certainly is, Anthony. We'll talk oh, yeah. about that in a little bit here. Uh, Courtney, appreciate you joining us as always there. Zach says, good evening. going to be a long two weeks for him because the guys are off this yeah, week. Yeah, I yeah, got a bye week and you got the, I guess, the region title um, against Liberty for the Red Devils next week. MJ says, going to be a three-peat go Lions Hey, man, they, they started clicking lately, and I love that. Chris is just, Chris is ready for Friday. We'll get to that baseburg Leesville game here in a minute, Chris. Another huge one for you guys. MJ says 27-21 lines. Yeah, yeah I, I'm thinking that. very tight ball game like that. Should be fantastic. Uh, definitely want to be there if you're in the area. <laughs> Danger said, if one for private schools have two state titles in a row, working on three. Certainly could make a case for that. Certainly could. Tanks is pulling for Darlington County. Let's go Silver yeah, and Red Foxes. I love it. I love it. Josh says, Saluda on top. 
Hey, the, the Tigers are rolling. Week. We will get to them here again in a minute. They've got another big one, but they played great football against Strom Thurmond last Friday night. No doubt about that. Ruddy says, uh, I can't tell what animal is that. I guess I I'm, going, I'm, I'm assuming it's a lion. We'll, we'll I can't say tell. That. It's too far away from my screen. Or maybe, or maybe, or maybe, I, or maybe I know Ruddy's a guy, so probably Saluda a tiger. Tigers. Probably a tiger. I was, I was trying to, I was trying to stretch that one there. Big cat. Let's move on. We got tons of comments. Let's move on to the next one. Love it. Guys. Our second calling game of the week, a 4A battle here. Chris just asked about this team. We've got Wren, the Hurricanes at 6-1, and one, traveling to the defending 4A state champion Westside Rams, who are 7-0. and oh. I mean, two teams that are playing really good football. We saw Wren, Drell and I did, lose their one game to T.L. Hanna on a Thursday earlier this year, a really tight game. They could have easily won. Westside still just absolutely rolling, played a super tough non-region schedule with guys like Creekside and guys like Prince Ave and you know, beat all of them, beat everybody that got in their way. Coach Lane had them playing great football. You know, this region is not the toughest besides Wren and Westside. After that, there's a really big drop of it feels like. So neither team has really been tested the last couple of weeks. But both are playing good football right now. Wren blanked Southside 63 to nothing last week, averaging 46 on offense, 9 on defense. John, quarterback Colton Bagwell, 10 for 13, 255, three touchdowns. 31 rush yards, and a receiving touchdown as well for the quarterback. Love to see the trick plays get in there. Running back Reese Price has gone for 100-plus in five of seven games this year. Receivers Brock Cherry and uh, Max Whitfield, defensively led by Cam Sanders and Tyler Morgan on the back end. Now, I think linebacker Pedro Catatlan was out last week. I don't know if he's back or not. He's a key piece in the middle for them. On the west side side, man, you know, 47 on offense, 20 on defense. They beat Lawrence 49 3 last week. We know the names. You know, Cutter Woods, 7 for 9, 211, three touchdowns. Sherrod Richardson, 17 carries, 200 yards, two more touchdowns. Camarius Bowman, one of our players of the week, 100 yard kickoff return touchdown, 111 receiving yards, two receiving touchdowns, 240 all purpose yards. You know, Armani Weaver, Drayson Evans, just so many weapons on offense. But the defense this year has played well also with linebacker uh, Johnny Wilson there in the middle. R.J. Livingston, I believe, is back now from injury. And then you got Weaver, Beaumont, and Richardson all at the back end, man. You know, I think Westside has been number one all season long in our poll and every 4A poll. But Wren, you know, they're they're playing inspired football right now. You know, with Isaac Wigginton went down with the car crash, you know, still in the hospital going through stuff a couple weeks ago, still going through that. They have really been inspired since that. It feels like playing good football. Can Wren, can they beat Westside? Can they hang in with Westside? What do you think here on Friday and – you know, obviously, what is the region title uh, there in that region of 4A? Yeah, I think Run's got the offensive firepower to to keep up with with uh, with, I keep West Side, excuse Red. me, West Side. Um, they've got the firepower to keep up with them. I just there's a talent gap. Run's a very good football team, but but the talent at West Side is it's much it's further ahead. It, it just is and. The scary thing about this West Side team is we talk about all the weapons they have on offense and how mm-hmm. dynamic they are offensively with the football. The special teams, yeah, I think is probably the most dangerous part of this football. That team. return game is awesome. It's incredible. And you know, that is, you know, you look at NFL and college, you can kick it to the end zone almost every time. High school football, not every team has that luxury. You don't you can't just do that with a lot of teams. I don't know anything about Ren's kicker. I don't know if he's able to do that. Uh, I don't know anything about their special teams, the front game, but I know how good <laughs> West side is. Mm-hmm. And that is such a dangerous piece of the team. If, if, if all things were equal, if Ren is able to keep up with West side on offensive pace, if they're able to slow them down a little bit, great. But can you compete with them on the special teams front? I don't think they can. Um, so- I think if they're, if they, play their best game offensively, defensively. I think they can hang in this game. I think they can make it a maybe a two-score game. But I think special teams is what's going to really set this game apart if it's a close game. I'm not convinced it's really going to be a close game. I think West Side is that good. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I could see West Side getting tripped up. They haven't had a game where they've tripped up yet this year. They had that bad half against Creekside. But from a 48-minute full-game perspective, they've not had a bad game. It's hard to go full season and not have one bad game. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not trying to jinx them, but it runs good enough to beat them if they do have an off night. I don't think they do. I think Westside wins this game pretty handedly. Um, but you still got to go out and play the game. still got to do it. 
obviously with any kind of game like this, turnovers is a big mm -hmm. thing. Special teams is a big thing. Um, do anything you can to not let them return the football. Um, you, you can't afford to kick it out of bounds on kickoffs, but squibbing it, something to not put the ball in Weaver's hands and let him do damage on that front. And funny you say that, Carl. Thinking about it, back when we saw Ren play T.L. Hanna, they were practicing kind of kicking it to the up man. Yeah. And, it, and it worked out once where the guy fumbled. The next time he kicked it to him, and the T.L. Hanna guy returned it for a touchdown. <laughs> so I don't know. That, you may not want to go that route this week. I don't know. But, you know, playing, no. it, playing it west side is always tough. A couple things, you know, stats in Ren's favor. They've only they've allowed 12 points or fewer at six or seven games this year, which is solid there. And I'm thinking with their offense, what they what they can do with Price and Bagwell on the ground, maybe they try to play kind of a conservative, you know, just milk the clock type game uh, because that's what they want to do anyway. So maybe they have a couple long drives where they just limit possessions there and kind of hang around. Uh, and, you know, and then Coach Freight there at Wren is a defensive guy. I'm sure he'll have some kind of game plan put together that'll, you know, hopefully – for their sake, figure out a way to just maybe contain some of the West Side offense. Because that West Side offense, you can't stop it. I don't think you just maybe contain it. But I like you said, I think the Rams with Cutter Woods, man, a veteran quarterback there, not going to make the back the big mistakes. I think West Side wins this game at home. Uh, but could be a, a tight one. Uh, but I, I do think the Rams are the more talented and probably the better football team this year. Yeah, I think so too. R Run's got a. Uh, um, I think defensively, you just got to take chances. You got to be you just ultra aggressive. You got to get as much pressure on Cutter Woods as possible because you give him any little bit of time, and it's twofold, right? You, you give a guy like Cutter Woods any bit of time, he's going to make a great throw. Mm -hmm. And then you got receivers like he does. If you give them a little bit of time, they're going to get open. Yeah. Um, you know, they got to bring Coach Freight, they got to find a way to bring a lot of pressure, bring it in different ways to get Cutter off schedule a little bit. Um, Maybe you get a fumble on a blindside sack, you know, something like that. You got to do something like that. And, and if you give up a bomb touchdown here and there, hey, you know what? They're going to score anyways. It, it, I think you just take that risk. I yeah, think, heat them up. I you never you know. You never know. Drell, comments from you or the chat here on this 4 -E matchup with Wren and Westside. I'll certainly keep it brief. I think turnovers is really the only way that that Wren's going to have a, a legitimate shot to win this football game. Uh, but I think, you know, West Side, they're just so talented. And the thing that we're not mentioning is they play a lot of those good offensive players on defense as well. Um, yeah. These guys go both ways. I mean, they're super talented. Uh, just continue to, to do it well. So West Side Rams fans, I know we slept on them last year. You're not going to get that same luxury this year. So it is what it is. But I do love what Wren's doing. It's a very good football team. We saw mm -hmm. them in person. Uh, you know, the one blemish is by one score against Teal Hanna. So, I mean, they're they're a very good football team. I think West Side's just on a just up a notch a little bit. So um, definitely going to go with the Rams in this one. But it should be a good football game there. Got a few comments, not that many on this game in particular, but comments of plenty, guys. Love it. Courtney says going with an upset Wren. Like okay, it. Courtney with the pick. I like okay, it. I hear you, Courtney. We've seen a plenty already this year. Kevron says, great collegiate war goes as tough as a Toyota. <laughs> okay, I like it, Kevron. What's up, guys? Hampton County. Good to see you, Terrence. Uh, Hampton County, you know, getting good that two seed Friday. there. Uh, they'll be in a good spot as the playoffs roll around. A tough well branch team you guys beat. Going Zeke, back to Louisville. Yeah, Louis Johnson. Zeke, I, I think you're right, Zeke. And, I mean, oh. we talked about it where you guys have played much better the last couple weeks. I mean, I think that's certainly evident with the scores. I think you guys are peaking at the right time. I like what you're doing there. Daniel, Daniel has a north-south kicker push out in the end zone every time, starting for later on in the year. That could be key, Nathan. That could be That's a big. key there for sure. That's big. I think Denmark. Daryl's picking Denmark over Bamberg. Okay, Daryl, very nice. I, I like that. Denmark, uh, an, an athletic it. team for sure, have see not it. put it all together you know, for a big win like that this year, but certainly could happen yeah. on Friday. Let's go to the next one, guys. Our third Kona game of the week, a 4A showdown in the PD area, John. A, a very good football game here. South Florence, the Bruins at 7-2, and two, traveling to Kellytown, taking on Hartsville Red Foxes at 7-1. and one. Last year, the Bruins won this game 49-21. to 21. Both teams have really rebounded well from a, a, a maybe a bit of a slow start, you could say, played some tough non-region games there. South Florence, 36-19 to 19 over Lower Richland last week, averaging 39 on offense, 20 on defense. Hartsville, 70 p 70-8 over Lakewood last week, 44 on offense, 16 on defense. For the Bruins, a two-headed monster at running back with Trey Leonard, went 9 for 174, two touchdowns, and then Zion Gilbert, 12 for 151 last week, had 362 yards total on the ground 
for the Bruins. Quarterback Messiah Jackson has progressed nicely, had two touchdown passes last week. He's got 19 TDs, five picks from the season. Really nice season there for the young quarterback. Receiver Jaden Sellers, Lenore's little brother, is a dynamic playmaker, running the ball, catching the ball, and in the return game as well there. Defensively led by defensive lineman Amari Adams, the Clemson commit there. Willie Kennedy last week, John. I saw these stats. I didn't have a chance to double-check right now, but it says Willie Kennedy, 21 tackles, two tackles for all. So, great job, Willie, all over the field for the Bruins. Cameron Coe, Amari Reeves as well are big-time players for Coach Marlowe's bunch. Hartsville, quarterback E.J. Smith, two touchdown passes and a TD rush last week. Hakeem Waters, two touchdowns on the ground and a TD catch. Kyleth Miller, a touchdown run. And then do it all to Marion Coe, man. Does everything from playing the, the secondary spot with picks and fumbles and tackles to blocking field goals, to returning t- returning kicks for touchdowns, man. Just a electric playmaker there on all sides of the ball for the Red Foxes. And then Webb Barnes at linebacker is a key piece for, for Coach Calabrese's team as well. Um, you know, two teams that, like I said, started off slow. You know, South Lawrence lost to Somerville in the Northwestern early on. Hartsville had the tie with Carolina Forest with the lightning delay game and then lost to Camden early on as well. But both teams are streaking, playing really good football right now here in Week 10. Yeah, these are really, uh, really talented teams. I, I got to see Hartsville in that Camden game. And they got weapons everywhere. I, Kyle F. Miller is an uh, incredible talent. I know uh, Demarion Coe, correct? Demarion Coe, yeah. He gets a lot of the, the attention and spotlight, deservingly so. But Kyle F. Miller, he is a special talent uh, for the Hartsville team, for the Hartsville offense. They're really good. I think what's tough about this game is I like the weapons that Hartsville has a lot more than what South Florence has. But I think where Hartsville is really going to have a Big trouble in this game is stopping the South Lawrence running attack. Mm-hmm. Um, South Lawrence, we've seen them at least once a year, I think, for the last two or three years. And it is – it's the same team every year, just the numbers and names change a little bit. Yeah. They are big. They yeah, are it's big, a program now that are Coach Marlowe. Yeah. And they're physical. <clears throat> and I've seen South Lawrence play the, the Hartsville program a couple years ago. It might have been last year. It might have been two years ago. And it felt the same way. It felt like – Talent-wise, weapon-wise, it was very, very equal, maybe even more in Hartsville's favor. But just the size and physicality of South Florence was too much for them to overcome. And unfortunately for Hartsville, I think that might be the deciding factor in this game too. I think um, Hartsville is good defensively. They're very good defensively. But I just have – they had a hard time stopping Camden consistently on the ground and making them throw the football um, with – success came through the football a little bit didn't have much success but they really didn't have to yeah they only scored 22 but i think south Lawrence can do what they want to do and run the ball keep the ball on the ground and i think they can probably score 20 30 points in this game doing that i don't know if hartsville can do the same against the south Lawrence defense that's also very good up mm-hmm. front as well um i think that's going to be the biggest challenge for hartsville is finding ways to stop South Florence enough to be able to win the game, and I just don't know they're going to be able to do it. couple stats here. South Florence, they are 6-0, and when Trey Leonard has two rush touchdowns or more. Okay. So if you can get him two, you got a good chance to win the ball game there. Um, but I was looking at you know the, the two games they lost early on, the, the Bruins, it was to Somerville and Northwestern. In those games, Somerville threw for 311, five touchdowns. Northwestern threw for 290 and five touchdowns. So it looks like you may be able to ta- be able to attack them on the back end but that's not really Hartsville's game. Like, like they yeah. want to run the ball with Waters and, and Miller and, you know, mix in some, some quarterback run and whatnot as well. Um, so I don't know if that's the way they're going to go about it. Um, and then you look at South Florence with the guy at the linebacker spots, you know, with uh, with, with Kennedy and Cameron Coe, then Amari Adams up front as well, man, just a, a big, big-time player. That that run game for Hartsville is going to have to be on point. Like, you know, I know Coach, Coach Calabrese is one of the best at finding the angles and finding the right play calls and kind of getting – you know, not not a traditional just inside power run. He's going to have some different stuff going on the edges and whatnot to give them some chances. But it should be a, a great game here. I, I don't know what to do because I feel like sometimes in my head I, I give too much credence to what happened earlier on in the year and forget about how much these teams may have improved. You know, cause I feel like both these teams are playing a lot better football than they were just, you know, back in week one, week two, week three. They are trending the right direction. And, and playing at Kellytown, man, there's something to be said for that. That's a tough place to play, a great home environment. Um, it's going to be a fantastic football game here. I think another one that, that's going to be a 7-10 to 10 point game, and I think maybe a special teams play from Demarion Coe. Maybe that's the difference. Maybe a block kick, a big return. 
But I think we're looking at a tight ball game here between these two. Drell, who do you like in this one? What are your comments? What are the, the chat saying? I know um, it's going to be a fun one, man, because I think both these teams, like I said, are, are peaking at the right time here. For sure, yeah. I'm the same way, dude. I get hung up on, <laughs> on the games that happen early in the season. Uh, but when you start looking at how these teams have played down the stretch, they, again, like the, the first matchup that we talked about, two teams that struggled early on, and then now like they are just you know mashing people. So yeah. it's going to be a fun one in Kellytown. going to be a, a heck of an environment. That's a pretty close um, you know, trip for, for South Florida to come there. Um, I was just down there in Hartsville, had some Westwood this, this past weekend, so it was fun to do that. So kudos to that but um i know i gotta go gotta go with the bruins here i think they're they're just a overall a little bit better team um you just look at the stars especially amari adams you know you think about hearts wanting to run the ball and that's what they're running into um i know we've got some comments saying that they you know you mentioned the, the stats that they're susceptible to the pass and you know they may be able to get some things done there uh, but when you see hearts you really think about them trying to run the football and it's going to be tough to do that against the south Lawrence defense yeah, great point there. What are the what's the chat saying? Oh, we got some some uh, Red Fox and Bruin fans in here. Tank says Hartsville defense is underrated. Elon's much better this They're year. Yeah, and, and they are very good. They've gotten better. I love Barnes. I love Co. Obviously, there. Uh, Justin says South Florence thirty four to twenty. Yeah, I can see that. Cameron says go Hartsville. They got potential. This game's gonna be a big one. Certainly will. Region title on the line, man. Gonna be a, a fantastic ball game. Chris says kind of torn on this one. Hart says so flow. Brain says Hartsville. I like it. I mean in. Like I said, something to be said for playing at home. That is a, a key in that region. Tank says two tall receivers on the outside been catching it, Span and Hawkins. And, and that could be a key here. You know, in, in years past, even with a guy like McKendry Douglas, who played a lot of quarterback, they still didn't want to throw it a ton. Like if they would when they, you know, one or two, but they didn't, that wasn't their game plan. So maybe tonight they go to, or this week they go to more of that with those big receivers there with the quarterback Smith slinging it around a little bit. Najee said, hey, HKT checking in. Najee, the boys are playing great football, man. Awesome win on Friday. They made a big jump in our poll, in the state poll. Uh, they are awesome. The Trojans are, are, are rolling right now. Huge win for them. Let's go to the next one, guys. Our fourth Kona game of the week, a massive two-way game, uh, John. We've got this team in it for back-to-back -back weeks now, and that's the Saluda Tigers at 7-0, and still undefeated, hosting the Batesburg-Leesville Panthers at 8-0. and I mean – I think this is the only match of, un of undefeated teams in the state still this week here. Last year, the Panthers 20 to 17 over Saluda um, and kind of an upset late in the year there. In this game, if Saluda wins, they will clinch the region title. If they lose, Batesburg will have a chance to clinch next week uh, with that win over Strom Thurmond. Batesburg Leesville rolled Pillion last week 49 to nothing. They're averaging 44 on offense, seven on defense allowed. Saluda, we mentioned the big winner of Strom Thurmond, 35 to 25, 31 on offense, nine allowed on defense. John, uh, a key takeaway from me in that game was the Saluda offense is much better than I thought it was. Uh, they yeah. played great, you know, 35 on a good Thurman defense, man. That really impressed me on Friday night. Yeah. And, you know, this was an offense for Saluda that was not exactly clicking early on in the season. Obviously, they did Friday, played a great game. Um, you know, we were so torn about that game. I think what I wanted to pick Saluda felt like I just couldn't do it because of history. And, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, um, I just didn't believe, and that's my fault. I, I didn't do it. Um, but basically, Leesville, the Panthers have had a, a special season thus far. They've done a really, really good job. Mm -hmm. Haven't had the toughest schedule, but the, the key for me for this Batesburg Leesville team, they beat Abbeville. Yeah. And I know Abbeville's 1A. I don't care. Yeah. Always a big one. that. They are typically they're a two way program, yeah. And they were, I mean, they won. They're one of the best, yeah. Arguably the best two way program, yeah. In the state for the last few years, um, and basically leagues will beat them. To me, that means a lot. To me, um, the Saluda win last week was a really really big deal too. I think Batesburg Leesville might be a little bit better, um, but I thought Strong Thurman might be a little bit better, and you know they get beat by ten. Um, over the Saluda. I really want to go to this game. Probably going to go to this game Friday night. I'm really looking forward to it. I think Batesburg Leesville wins this game, but here's what I think is going to happen. If Batesburg Leesville wins this game Friday, Strom Thurman is going to beat him next week. And we're going to have chaos in the region. But um, I, I think it's going to be a phenomenal ball game. It's going to be an awesome atmosphere. Two fan bases that are tremendous. Batesburg Leesville has been really hungry 
to be in this mm -hmm. kind of position for a long time. Here they are. They're in it. Uh, these are two great teams. And I, I hate to say this because somebody's got to lose this game. Whoever loses this game, you still got an awesome chance to make it to Orangeburg uh, in, in December as well, no matter what. This is going to be a really, really good game. I can this region, this 2A region, a lot like that PD region in 3A with Lawrence, mm -hmm. Marlboro, Kane, and Dillon. It has that same kind of feel, great fan bases, great, great programs, and just really, really even good teams at the top. The Panthers, quarterback Tanner Watkins. He, he is chasing some all-time records here. I think he's third in passing yards and second passing touchdowns, or something like that. So he's getting really close to the career leader there. He had 200 offensive yards last week, a touchdown pass, two touchdown runs. Quarter or uh, running back Amadre Wooden, 150 plus, two touchdowns. Receiver Jamarius Clark, three catches, 100 plus yards, and a touchdown. Katie Witt's a playmaker as well. Defensively, defensive lineman John Sawyer in North South got Clarence Springs at the safety spot, a hard hitter. I like him a lot. Hansel Descua, uh, Wyler Wooten, excuse me, Tyler Wooten, and then Christian Burkett as well. They've got five shutouts this year, John. They're playing really good on that side of football. Five shutouts for the Panthers. For Saluda. Last week, Braden Williams, 19 carries, a buck 54, two touchdowns. Tristan Daniels, two touchdown runs in the fourth quarter to really ice that game. Quarterback Drew A. Rant, we mentioned him but last week. You know, he's played a lot of football there, a guy who knows how to get it done. Uh, Vic Gaines out wide. They spread the field and run the football. That's what they want to do. Defensively, JT Lott up front is a big-time playmaker. Jaden Folks, uh, Ja Folks, Folks as well. Two two really good player, players for the, uh, the Tigers there. I was also surprised, not only the offense for Saluda, but how they held that Strom Thurmond run game in check last week. You know, Strom Thurmond has been kind of leaning on that run game this year, it feels like, with Blacks and and those guys. But they did a good job of keep, keeping them in check last week in that big-time win. This will be a great game. You know, Coach Young does a great job of Saluda. You know, Coach uh, Greg Hill, sorry, uh, Greg Lawson there, basically leaves with a guy who wasn't originally, you know, given that job. He just kind of got it after some other things going on. He's done a, a, a great job. He's a guy that's coached, you know, coached at Gaffney all over the place, you know, coached at Gaffney, coached all over the place. I, I saw an interview earlier, I think maybe this month, where he said the running back, a couple of guys on offense at Baxter Leesville now, would have played for him at Gaffney. Like, they're that good of talent, what they've got there for the Panthers. So, going to be a, a great matchup. Uh, I like – Man, playing at Salute is tough. Like that, Very that, tough. that makes That's me want. Cool, cool especially after I just missed this game last week, I completely blew that one. I like Pittsburgh Leesville a lot. I think a little too multiple on offense. I think they scored just enough here. Saluda, I think they get their first loss, but I'm thinking it's be a close, a close, close, close ball game. I think on Friday so night, and it may be. Pittsburgh Leesville might be the only team in in Upper State two way that can beat them. Oh boy, here we go again. We're gonna do it again. We doing this again. Wait, wait. Are you taking base for Leesville? No, I'm taking Saluda just so. Okay, we that's it. We can't all three uh, do it. I was gonna say if you do, I'm gonna switch. One of the <laughs> nope. We're going. I'm going Saluda. I want to be welcome down there again. Fantastic environment, like John mentioned. Super impressed by last week, man. That was fantastic. Um, scoring some touchdowns, <laughs> just celebrating in our face. Have not seen many Thurman fans in the chat tonight. So if you're here, we would like to see you comment. Uh, but yeah, that's an impressive. You know, win by the Tigers. Um, let's just let's just for you know for the sake of it, we'll go with the Tigers here. But I think it's going to be a whale of a ball game. Going like the other one, three points at home. We'll just do it that way. How about I love that? it. Me and Kevin will have to sit on the the Batesburg side, and you'll get to sit on the home side. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I might run out with the, the banner and you know the purple yeah, smoke, yeah, all that good it. stuff. Coach Coach Young's going to be loving me there. So yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> I mean, just uh, another fantastic ball game, man. Going to be a, a great one on Friday. Any comments from the chat on that two A matchup? Ruddy says, Saluda by 10. I don't yeah, know if I'd say about that much, but that, that would be a be heck impressive. of a win there, man. Uh, they have they, they proved us wrong all year long, so the Tigers are yeah. playing great football, they no doubt about it. Talking Zach about some tiebreakers. If, if Batesburg wins, and Thurman would have to be beat Batesburg by 11 or more mm. to win the region. Yeah, if, you get, if we didn't get those 3A ties, it gets uh, – a three-way ties gets really tricky because no region has the same tiebreaker, it feels like. So that yeah. gets really, uh, really tough. Bias says, Strom Thurman has to test with passing – Facebook doesn't have a Sewell. Saluda run defense is good. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Facebook is about three, good. says Chris. That's what I'm thinking, too. Tanks is torn about this game. Certainly here, too, no man. Uh, you know, you asked me in five minutes, I may have switched my pick. I don't know. MJ says exactly. Abbeville wins has a lot. Yeah, that's a yeah. big win, man. It was a, a close game, a high-scoring game, but uh, the Panthers still came out on top and led basically the whole way in that one, really. Very impressive. 
Chris is roughly, roughly 400 yards on the passing record. Make sure to salute us. <laughs> keep keep drilling over there, right, Chris? So, uh, I mean, I, I think Tanner's got a good chance for 400 yards to get those over the next couple weeks in the playoffs, yeah, you would yeah. think. So, think uh, a games. great career there for Tanner Watkins at Baseball Leesville, no doubt about it. Let's go to the skis game of the week, guys. Perfect. Our skis a game of the week. A, another region title on the line here, one A, John. Uh, Dorchester at seven and one, traveling to Williamsburg at six and one. Dorchester, a surprising loss to Colin and Prep, thirty-eight to twelve last week, averaging thirty-one on offense, fourteen on defense. Quarterback John Quattlebaum, running back John Wetzel, averaging a buck seventy a game on the ground. Defensively, Win Cusky, Abe Schuler, Bryson Connor on that side lead them for Williamsburg, thirty on offense, thirteen on defense. Quarterback Micah Balder is a dual threat. Running back is sophomore Grant Small. You got the Calders out wide. Defensively, Ty Tilton, Wyatt Floyd, and Bryce Blackburn. Their only loss early in the season in a non-region contest to PD Academy. This game at the Corral, Williamsburg is a tough place to play. A good football team. You know, going into last week, if you'd asked about this game, I maybe would have picked Dorchester. But the fact they lost to Colin and Prep, that really caught me off guard. Didn't see that coming. Um, Colin and Prep's a good team, but didn't think they would beat them by 26 points. The Raiders, that would be. Um I'm going to go Coach Boyd and the Stallions in a close one here. Uh, this is a big game to get to get home field uh, in the 1A playoffs here for, for Williamsburg or Dorchester. Yeah, I feel exactly the same as you. You know, I would have picked Dorchester last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, pretty much any time in the season. But getting – I mean, they got beat up last yeah. week. They got yeah. beat up. And, it, and it's hard to think that Dorchester will lose back-to-back games. But I think Williamsburg is really good – they're getting this game at home mm-hmm. at the corral. Great name. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> um, and you got George Esther, I think on their heels a little bit. Cause you know, George Esther had to be f- feeling good about themselves. And then when you get beat, like you did last week, the, you, then you start to maybe question some things. You, your, your confidence takes a little bit of a blow. Um, if anybody can get up off the mat and do it, it, it would be Dorchester. Yeah. But I like Williamsburg in this. I, I, I think they win this game. I think it's going to be a, an awesome ball game, but I think, I think Williamsburg has got the momentum. Going in this ball game, I think they win. Yeah, and Coach Nelson does a great job there at Dorchester. And I, I, I have not been able to confirm. I, I saw, I think, that Wetzel may not have played a ton two weeks ago. I'm not sure what his status was last week. So maybe that place played something to do it. I don't know. But I don't know if he's back or not. He's just a, a battering ram, a huge force there at running back. So if he's not playing, that's a huge miss for the Raiders. But I think Williamsburg, probably the best team in 1A. I think they win this game at home. Should be. A close one here. Drill. any other comments from the chat on any of these Kona games before we kind of move into the next portion or comments from you on the skis game of the week as well? Yeah, hey, going with the Raiders, man. We just stumbled last week. You know, it's hard to go undefeated. Just, uh, you know, just a, a you know, one-off type game there. But Dorchester's going to win this one. Pull the upset. They're going to solidify that they're the best team there. And I believe I believe we all picked against Dorchester earlier in the season. I think they won that game. So I did. I, 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 you I may have had Dorchester. I don't, I don't know. know. I think I picked I against <laughs> But, yeah. Um, anything else, Drell, for you? Shout out some friends of the program and then look down at the rest of this week's slate. This uh, is going Johnson back to the most, salute again. Most yeah. disciplined team will win. 100%. Yeah. In, in games that are this tight, like all of our calling games of the week, games that could be a three to seven or 10 point game, one big penalty, one big turnover, one, you know, slip and fall, whatever it is. I mean, that can make a difference in a game like this, especially when guys are maybe a little bit more nervous, a little bit more tighter, close so much on the line. You could have a, one mistake could cost you a football game. Uh, no doubt about that. Drell, let's give a shout-out to some friends of the program, then we'll start looking at the rest of this week's slate. A single moment can ignite a passion. With every play, a spirit of teamwork is forged, and determination evolves into success. Life is the ultimate team sport, and a trusted teammate makes all the difference. Our team at Founders Federal Credit Union works hard every day to offer the financial tools you need backed by unrivaled member service. Relax, you're with Founders. The George Agency has been serving the insurance needs of South Carolina for over 40 years. They're a full-line insurance agency concentrated in employee benefits and health insurance with an office in Mullins and Merle's Inlet, but they can help you all across the state. They have clients in Greer, Rock Hill, Columbia, and more, so wherever you are, they can help. Give Bradley, Wayne, Richard, and the crew a call or check them out online at thegeorgeagency.net. That's thegeorgeagency.net. John, let's take a look now at the 5A slate. Should be, uh, obviously, we had five huge games. There's a lot more that we'll get to here as we go through the rest of the the, the slate here in the state. There are a ton. uh, Starring 
over toward the uh, PD Grand Strand. We've got St. James will be hosting Sacristy. Irma will be at home against Chapin. It could be a tough game there. Yeah, yeah. Chapin's been tough to figure out. Like they played pretty well early, early in the year. We're scoring points on everybody, even when they lost, like the Somerville. Yeah. But they've really kind of taken a dive the last few weeks. Not looked great. Irma has continued to impress. It seems like week after week. I think they win that matchup and set up a huge one with Dutch Fort next week. Could be a lot of points in that game. We'll see Sumter hosting Westwood. Woodmont will be at Easley. Conway will go to Carolina Forest. JL Mann will host Greenville. That's a, a fun game because they do the, the I guess, the Spirit Week or what's it called, where they do the huge fundraiser. These guys raise like $100,000 yeah. for like, you know, you know, charities and whatnot. Awesome. Uh, glad they were able to get that game in after they were supposed to be scheduled, I think, during one of the hurricane weeks. So glad they were able to reschedule yeah. that and get make that happen. Yeah, yeah. And they do a great, those kids do a great job with that fundraising. Somerville will be at Fort Dorchester. A game that's usually big this year, not as tight. Fort Dorchester yeah. has struggled a little bit down the stretch here. Um, I think Somerville is playing good football. I think they win this game easily. I do too. Northwestern will go to Indian Land. Burns travels to Boiling Springs. Boiling Springs, a nice bounce back last week. You know, I was worried about them after losing to Spartanburg two weeks ago. They come back in and they handle a, a Riverside team fairly easily. Uh, Burns getting blown out by Spartanburg. Boiling Springs, you know, may have found something on offense last week. I think the Bulldogs win this one. And Burns has been playing really good defense. So we'll, if Bolton Springs can put up some points this Friday, I think that really says a lot mm -hmm. about their a lot about their offense coming a long way here. Teal Hannah will go to Malden and Riverside. They'll be at home against Spartanburg. Spartanburg, man, they have impressed, impressed, impressed last couple of weeks. I mean, uh, the big big winner Bolton Springs, the big win over Burns. They've gotten the offense figured out. The defense yes. has been great all year long. Coach Hodges bunch is playing really good football right now. Very good. Clover will go to Catawba Ridge. Two pretty good teams in the in the Rock Hill area. Uh, you know, Catawba Ridge, I think he just has two losses. I believe they lost to maybe it was Chapin and the Northwestern. Um, but they play good for Coach Lindak all year long, kind of flying under the radar there. Clover had some injuries with, with the running back being out for a while, but Coach Wilbright does a great job. Could be a good ball game. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a that should be a tight game there. Uh big game here in this region. Dutch Fork will be at River Bluff. River Bluff, pretty good defensive group. Um, I don't think it's gonna be a super close game, but you never know. River, yeah. Bluff, River Bluff can play. I mean, Dutch Ford just continues to strangle everybody, it feels like. Man, you're lucky if you score against them. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. it might, might be a similar case for River Bluff this week. I mean, because what they do defensively with Smith and, and Salters and, and Sessions there for Coach Knotts, man, they are so tough on that, that side of the football. They are very good. East side, they'll go to Dorman. Ashley Ridge at home against West Ashley. Kane Bay will go to Goose Creek. Gaffney will go to Wade Hampton. A good get right spot for the Indians. You know, a couple tough weeks. You win two weeks ago against Riverside in a tight game. You you lose a tough one to Dorman last week. Uh, a good game to get some things figured out, some kinks worked out as you get ready for that big Spartanburg matchup next week. Yeah, got to get the offense back in sync mm -hmm. for the Indians. Uh, Friday will be a great chance to do that. Blythewood at home against Ridgeview. Nice rivalry game there. Blythewood broke off from uh, Ridgeview years ago when that school was created. Yeah, and I do want to shout out. Defensive lineman Sterling Sanders for Blackwood was committed to Georgia Southern, I believe it was. Got a offer from Boston College nice. and flipped to Boston College earlier this week. A big time player up front there for the Bengals. And that looks like a fun program to play for mm -hmm. under uh, Bill O'Brien right now. Good things for the Boston College Eagles. Good future for them. Lucy Beckham, they will go to Wanda. Fort Mill is at Nation Ford. James Island will host RB Stahl. The red hot James Island Trojans, by the Playing way. Very good football. Lexington will go to White Knoll. That's a pretty good game there. Um, neither team having the season that they really wanted to have this year. But, uh, hey, they're still going to be in the hunt for the playoffs. This will be a good game there. Yeah, and that should be big for region seeding as well. Uh, White Knoll at winless in the region right now. Uh, Lexington wow. sitting there with one win. Uh, the Timberwolves really need to win that one. And then we'll have Greenwood go to Hillcrest. That has become a very big ball game yes. over in Simpsonville Friday night. Yes, a game that was supposed to be scheduled the first week uh, of Helene when that damage came through. Had to reschedule that for now. It feels like both these teams, you just had to kind of weather the storm the last couple of weeks, you know, pardon the, the, the pun there, I guess, because having to play so many games so many days, you were like a little bit of a mash unit on both sides. Uh, you know, I think Greenwood came out of it losing to Maine but beating everybody else. I believe Hillcrest won all their games in that little stretch. Back to kind of a normal schedule now. The Rams seem to be rolling off. I think they put up 600-plus yards against Woodmont on Saturday. An awesome game from them. Greenwood has 
you know, really surprised us this year playing good football. Uh, their one loss, I believe, was to Dorman, I think. I think so, yeah. beat everybody. It should be a fun game. Uh, I could see a lot of points in this one on Friday night. Yeah, two, uh, two really good teams. And uh, super impressed with Greenwood making the jump back up to 5A this year. And, and boy, they have not missed a beat. They've played, they've played better this year hmm. than they have in recent years. Um, so excited for that program there. And our hometown connection game of the week, a really fun rivalry here. You get Myrtle Beach going to play at North Myrtle Beach. Uh, this is a very, very fun game. And, and two programs that I think are pretty evenly matched this year. Would you would you say the same? Yeah, the, the Battle of the Beaches here for our HTC Hometown Connection game. You know, Myrtle Beach at 4-4 four and four, had the tough loss to Carolina Forest last week. That game was 17-17 to 17 at half. The Panthers end up winning 52 to 38. Uh, just really, really, the offense broke open for both teams last week. North North Myrtle Beach, a big win over St. James, 52 to 15. This team was winless non region, has now won three games in the region, go to three and oh, and have a chance to play for a region title here for Coach Hill. Myrtle Beach, quarterback Gibson, good road. The baseball players, a stud back there for them. Runner at Mike Cohen's had a big year. Antonio Brown as well, receivers Simmons and Brown. Keith on, at the linebacker spots, a good player for them. Head coach Mickey Wilson always has a great program, it feels like. North Myrtle Beach led by quarterback Landon Cloninger, 256 and four touchdown passes and a rush touchdown last week. Receiver Caden Gore, two TD catches, a TD rush. Drew Prince, I believe, is averaging about, I think, like a buck 50 the past four or five games on the ground. Really good job there for him. Defensively, linebacker Lamonte Smith, Will McNeely, and Tanner Pitilla. Myrtle Beach in that loss drill gave up 350 rushing yards to one player. Oh. And Drew Prince from North Myrtle Beach is pretty dang good. Uh, I mean, that's that's a worry uh, a worry stat for sure for Coach Wilson at Myrtle Beach. Big time, big time. And when you can't when you can't stop the run, I mean, it is extremely difficult to win a football game, especially when you got somebody running wild like that. I mean, that is that's a recipe for a big L. Yeah, uh, last year Myrtle Beach won fifty six twenty one. This rivalry. It's one of those that sometimes does have kind of the middle edge to it. Like I believe I remember reading the stat maybe two or three years ago, where I think all time Myrtle Beach had only beaten, sorry, North Myrtle Beach only beat Myrtle Beach like six times or something like that. And I think half of them were Coach Matt Real, who's no longer there. Um, so Myrtle Beach has a big edge all time in this series, but they're on the road. North Myrtle Beach is hot. They're playing good football, man. I think the Chiefs might be able to surprise the Seahawks this week. I'm going to go Myrtle Beach, but I think this is uh, – they certainly have a chance. I think this will be a close game, and Myrtle Beach is going to have to earn it. Yeah. Uh, Jarrell, comments from you on our HTC Hometown Connection game between Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach. Hey, man, give me the Chiefs in this one. Red hot. Chiefs are hot. You know? All right. I mean, 3-0 three, three in the region. I think Myrtle Beach, maybe that loss beats them. I mean, you got to look at the, the film there. Early shout-out to Jaron Fox from Carolina Forest. <laughs> Just ran wild in that game <laughs> against, against them. So, uh Going with the Chiefs in this one um, should be a fun one. Maybe they get that seventh win in the series. Myrtle Beach at North Myrtle Beach for our HTC Hometown Connection game of the week. HTC, this is life. Connect with it. Jarrell, any comments from the chat on this 5A slate here in week 10? I did have one note, too. Uh, Chris, good, good thing you're here, Chris. Somewhere about 50. Chris, I don't know if you know, I had heard that Jaden McDowell may be back for Gaffney this week. I don't know if you can confirm it or not. I've heard that as a possibility. I thought he was out for the season when he had the surgery earlier in the year, but he may be back. Says the Indians did not play well against Dorman. They obviously had a chance to write the ship this week. Exactly right. Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you're still being a, a great spot for a chance to play for the region title. Uh, that was a touchdown. It was a touchdown. Hey, Gaffney. yeah, Just yeah, say yeah. That. It was a touchdown. You're right. I saw the clip. Um, the refs missed that one. I'm just saying the refs missed that one. They did. Um, but any other 5A comments? Nathan says, Greenville, man, funders wow. are close to a million dollars. That incredible. is awesome. Where's, really where's this money come from? I, Mark I Wahlberg. That's a good idea. I got a really Mark good Wahlberg. Idea. Awesome to hear from those two. Anything else on 5A? EJ says, listen, you guys, thoughts on Northside Christian. They're a really good football team. I think that I've got them, you know, I think three in our poll right now, um, playing really well in the 3A skeezer ranks, EJ. You know, had the, the interesting, you know, the tough loss to Wilson Hall earlier on the year, but they're playing much better football feels like now. The the Crusaders are, are, are sorry, the Blazers. Blazers, I believe it is. Sorry. Yeah, no more linebacker, linebacker in Skiza, 4-0 D lineman. Wow. They're playing great. Uh, uh, you know, a, a team that has not played a lot of Skiza football until the last couple of years. Northside's doing a good job there. They are uh, trending in the right direction. Chris says McDowell is practice this week, but not sure if he will play. Okay, good to know. That's good. good to know. I mean, That's I could certainly time. see him wanting to hold him for a bigger game. Yeah. But um, good, to, good to hear there, Chris. 
Let's go to 4A, guys. Looking down to the 4A slate now, John, lots of big matchups there as well. I, You know, I, I look at the Daniel games and I go, all right, this has potential to be a good game. Usually I'm wrong, uh, but I'm going to get – I'm going to get my hopes up again. Greer will go to Daniel uh, for this region game. Greer, a much better team this year than they have been lately. I still think Daniel wins this game, but I'm hoping it's competitive. I believe it's the region title as well. Right. Um, not sure who these guys have next week, but I believe these are the only two undefeated teams still in the region. So this is probably for the region title. Now, um, Seneca and Daniel did not play, correct? Or did they make that game up later? They have not made it up. Greer beat Seneca. Okay, uh, Seneca does not right. play Daniel. That's right. Is, that is TR right. not in contention anymore? They were, um, but not. Now. You know what? I think if they had beaten Berea, they may have had a chance. Okay. But um, that, uh, I think that completely took them out. They were they Sorry. were in contention in July. <laughs> I love it. Carlton, I love it. Uh, Carlton County they'll host Bishop England. Pickens will go to Travelers Rest. Could be a win for the Devil Dogs there. Devil Dogs trying to get back into it, Joe. I need that win. Airport goes to Brooklyn KC. Gray will go to Gilbert. Fun ball game there. So uh, another group or another area similar to the the region up here in Greenville, where they're playing a ton of games lately. Here, <laughs> you know, yeah, Gray and yeah. Gilbert, North Augusta, Miller Valley, getting after it. Gray Collegiate playing really good football right now. Um, getting hot in the region. It'll be a great matchup with them, them in North Augusta next week for that region title. Tougher than a Toyota, Kevron says. That's right. That's that's hard to beat. Fountain Inn will go to Southside. That's a winless Southside program. Fountain Inn doing a good job this year. They're a four and four club. Midland Valley will travel to North Augusta. Remember how huge and fun that game was last year? Uh, North, you know, Midland Valley was I think nine and zero going into that one. North Augusta may have had like two losses. They were playing great too. I was looking back to that show today. Get taking some notes and before last year, North Augusta had beaten Midland Valley twenty three years in a row. Wow. And Midland Valley wins it close last year. Uh, you know, North Dakota, I think they had a field goal blocked or missed at the end to lose that game. But speaking of these teams playing all these games, Michael Doe from North Augusta has 15 touchdowns the last nine days. <laughs> so, played three games in the past nine days, 15 tutties, man. That's an impressive stat there for running back. Uh, Michael Doe for the Yellow Jackets. That is pretty cool to see. But Midland Valley as well, I do want to mention this. They are training upwards. You know, Coach Dorn has been playing a little better football now the last couple of weeks. I don't think they have quite enough to beat North Augusta, especially the Jackets Nest this week. Uh, but always a fun rivalry there when the Mustangs and the Yellow Jackets get together. Yeah, they've played with a lot of pride this year. Uh, you know, they did not start off the season well, but they have they have ride the ship and yep. have had a very uh, respectable season so far. Big game here in Columbia. South Point will go to Richland Northeast. I know Will Wilson's been a little He's bit back. Uh, He's back now. Um, how healthy he is, I don't know. I think last week was his first week back. Um, a, a great quarterback matchup here with Wilson and Cam McMillan getting after it. And Arnie, such a tough heart, uh, you know, a tough team to read because they have played so well early in the year. Yeah. Wilson goes out, you lose two really tough games like you that, that you would think you wouldn't lose even without Wilson. You lose to Dreer, yeah. and I believe uh, who was it? Was it Lancaster they lost to? I can't remember. Oh. Whoever it was did not play well without him. Um, he's back now. Changes the dynamic of that team, you know, drastically. But I think South Point, the defense, still too much on that. So I think they, they, they kind of contain Wilson in that, that R and E offense. I think the Stallions' role in this one, I think. Yeah, and uh, MJ, I think you you might be right about South Point uh, and Four A. They are awfully good. That Camden game was uh, shocking to see how that game went. I think if Will Wilson is a hundred percent, I think this is a really close football game. Because he he is tough to contend with, and I think just the, him on the field and a hundred percent, just the entire team feeds off of it. I think with him being absent the last few weeks, uh, you know that Dreer game, they've got a really good defense. But I think just not having him out there, I don't know if the defense just felt more pressure to mm -hmm. to you know pressing a little bit more. I don't know. I didn't see the games. It, it, you know, I can't tell with super confidence on that. But that's just the feeling that I get. But then back on the field, I think it changes the, the dynamic for the entire team. I think if he's 100%, we see a really good ball game. South Point a little bit better, I think. Mm -hmm. But I hope he's 100% and we see a very competitive game because um, really, really uh, impressive talent on the field there. It'll be fun to see Will Wilson and uh, Currents. Yeah. On the defensive end yeah. of South Point. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that'll be fun too. Those guys will be playing big time football on Saturday very soon. So we, Fun to see them go at it on Friday as well. Mm -hmm. We'll see Emerald. They'll host Lawrence. We talked about this game earlier, one of our Kona games of the week. Wren traveling over to West Side. 
Bluffton goes to May River. Good game there over in Bluffton. And that's a region two where it, it might be with the region title. I don't know. You got four teams with one loss in that region right now. So I don't know how that's going to all shake out. Uh, May River, a nice bounce back last week after a tough loss, I guess, two weeks ago now. Um, Bluffton's playing good football as well. I think, you know, May River, that, that run game is just too much. I think they win this game. Yeah, should be a good game, though. I like May River in that one. I'm really high on May River this year. Blue Ridge, they'll go to Berea. Berea with three wins this year. Impressive for the Bulldogs. Just rubbing it in Drell's face, aren't you? Hey, they they, they be on Dis, two disres, Disrespectful. Wow. <laughs> hey, I can brag. Lugoff Elgin don't even play this week. We rolled Spring Valley last week. We were just sitting on our laurels this week. Hilton Head, they'll go on the road and play Buford. Another one of those one-loss teams in the region is Hilton Head. <laughs> there you go. Hilton Head's a good team, too. South Aiken will travel to Aiken. Camden hosting AC Floor, which this has become a, a pretty interesting ball game here. Is AC Floor has been playing really good football lately. Mm-hmm. Camden, not so much, but we know they're still a good team. One of our county games of the week we talked about earlier as well. Big time game over in Kellytown. South Florence will visit Hartsville. Crestwood on the road against Lakewood. A nice Sumter County rivalry there. Crestwood playing good ball. A nice one over Darlington last week. Uh, they are playing really well, you know. People kind of forgot about him without Javion Martin, you know, this year. But they've they've played solid football in a good spot to to make a, a nice little run in the playoffs. I feel yeah. like we'll see a gritty Lancaster team play at York, and Wilson will travel to Darlington. Darlington, they got a chance to go 500 in the regular season uh, with a win on Friday, mm-hmm. which would be a huge. Got the Darlington hat here. It's right. huge for them to uh, to do that. That'd be a, a huge drive for that person. And, and I believe they have done that without their quarterback part of the year. I think he got hurt, the Augustus kid, uh, a little bit early on. So they've really you know, fought hard down the stretch for Coach Johnson. Um, any comments on 4A or anything else, Jarrell, in the chat? Well, say, how about those Bishops? Man, great comeback win against Bluffton. I want to say they were down like two scores or so going in the second half, playing really great football for Coach Hall. I mean – a Bishop England team, John, that first year in 4A has seven wins. We never saw that coming. A team that, you know, struggled at the 2A level, honestly, the last few years, playing really good football. Love what Mahoney and those guys are doing their bay log for Coach Hall, man. A, a great story the Battle of Bishops have been this season. Yeah, yeah, very impressive. Harry says, Irma going to win state and upset Dutch Ooh. Fork in 5A next week. Okay, Harry, that, you know, I think they got a better chance of that first part than the second part, uh, but but we'll see, man. That's going to be a, a great game down there. Here he says, with Will Wilson back, RNA will go deep in the playoffs in 4A. Yes, he, he is that dynamic of a playmaker, man. He can put the team on his back and, and make some plays and have them make a nice run for sure. Malcolm Doe says, you know, uh, yep, give us the thumbs up there. Brandon says, Mike Doe getting four more touchdowns against Mike Valley. So that would give, I guess, uh, Michael will have them, what, 19 over, I don't know, 16 days or something like that. So pretty impressive there what he's done. Uh, good shout out there, Brandon. MJ says Northwestern game was closer than the score. Okay. And I believe that game too, MJ, uh, I think Cam McMillan didn't play the first half, came in the second half and kind of brought them a little bit tighter. So certainly a good ball game when those two get together as always. Let's jump down to 3A, guys. Looking down at the 3A slate now, John, what do we have on the docket here in Week 10? Yeah, we've got a, a Thursday night matchup here. Chapman will go to Broom. Everybody else will play on Friday. So on Friday, we have got Orangeburg Wilkinson will go to Oceanside. Really big game there. We'll see if OW is for real in that game for sure. For the region title, uh, Oceanside Collegiate uh, team, I'm saying every week, I think they're very good, and people just kind of wrote them off because they lost to Dutch Fork and they lost to a team out of uh, State, I think. yeah Calvary. They lost to Dutch Fork, Irmo, and then I think Calvary or Savannah, something like that. They've played really good when they played teams at their level. They're a good football team. The, the Bruins, though, have been a little tough to figure out. You know, they lose to HKT a couple weeks ago, but they've got some really nice wins outside of that. They have an interview with Coach Carter next week from the Bruins as well. It's been look out for that. But a fun game, I think, Manavian and Crew Virgilio there for the Land Sharks. Probably a little too much offensive firepower if they win that game and, and win the region. And regardless, has been an awesome season for the Bears. Uh, excited to see what they do in the playoffs as well. Palmetto will be at home against Christchurch. Newberry on the road against Swansea. A good ball game there. Two uh, good teams, a little bit under the radar, but two mm-hmm. really good teams in that game. Battery Creek will go to Hanahan. Crescent is at home against Pendleton. Aner will host Loris. Loris, the region champion Loris Lions, by the way. Congratulations to them. Um, 
they're a great team. They certainly deserve. Yeah. It. Drill, did you see, did you have the year? It's been like what twenty something years since the region championship for the Lions. I'll look through. I'll comb through the notes. But yeah, big two zero win over Marlboro County this week. That was huge for Loris. Okay. <laughs> well, Wahala will go to Belt and Honey Path region title there. Um, BHP is man so good with Henderson. Uh, just you know doesn't even have to play the second half most of the time there. Wahala though with Coach Stone has been an improving program the last two years. You know Silas Parrish and. Atlanta Stone, those guys get it done on the ground. But I think BHP, too much firepower, uh, too much offense, I think, right now for Walhalla. Yeah, I think BHP, uh, it will be the latter part of the playoffs until they get really tested mm -hmm. again. Carolina will go to Southside Christian. St. Joseph's will be at Powdersville. Region title on the line there. Uh, two teams that are undefeated in region. Powdersville, I believe, has not lost uh, since week three, maybe. I think wow. they've been on quite a roll here lately. For Coach Muster, man, getting that offense rolling, the run game is an impressive for them. Playing really good football there. St. Joe's, it's the kind of team that's you know been flying under the radar. I hadn't talked a lot about St. Joe's. They've got it going uh, with new head coach after Chris, after Chris Goodman left. They've been a, a solid team there in that region as well. Yeah, very impressive with Powersville. They have really turned it up lately. Silver Bluff will go on the road to Fox Creek. Woodruff hosting Union. Welcome all will be at Marlboro County as of now. We'll probably know more tomorrow morning. As yes. Of now, that game is still on. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys not see, there is a uh, a special meeting tomorrow from the high school league. There are some appeals going on. Um, Marlboro County is one of the teams appealing. I believe it's 10 a.m. tomorrow, 1030. Now, of course, the what they're appealing has not been exactly put out. You can make your own assumptions or guesses or hear rumors, but that has not been officially stated by the high school league or by the, the, the team. Um, or the school, excuse me. But there is an appeal tomorrow from Marlboro County. They, of course, forfeited their game Friday against Loris. Um, they said it's said due to some lighting issues in that game. We don't really know uh, for sure. But there's an appeal tomorrow um, with the high school league for the Bulldogs. We'll see. West, uh, they'll host uh, Greenville Charter School or private school, the Greenville Hurricanes. Um, they're kind of an independent school, if you will. Um and then Dylan will host Georgetown to close out the 3A slate. I, I did forget to mention, I believe Newberry Swansea also for a region title, I think, uh, this that week there good. between the Tigers and the Bulldogs. Drill, any 3A comments from you or from the chat? Uh, Derek says, Powders are still rolling. Can't we see the playoff yeah. brackets fall? Yeah, they're playing great, Derek. You guys have really turned it on here in region play, um, getting settled in, kind of finding the a new rhythm with some new players. They had a lot to replace from last year. Uh, Coach Muster and the boys are playing good football for sure. Court says BHP Bears big by 60. 60 is a lot, uh, but they are very good. They, I think they win as well and get that region title. Here says Loris is a good, good team. They They're certainly a good are a good team. football team. Anybody that comes out of that region um, is going to be good. That is it for the comments, guys. Perfect. Shout out some friends of the program, and we'll start looking down to the 2A slate. At HTC, we're here to keep you connected. Here to provide reliable fiber optic internet. With free, fast, and secure HTC Smart Wi-Fi, HTC. With three convenient locations in Spartanburg, Duncan, and Greenville, Carolina Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associates, Kona, offers the most advanced training and experience in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, sports medicine, and pain management in the upstate. Go to Kona.care to... Looking for top-notch sports gear and uniforms? Look no further than First Team Sports. With 30 years of serving the Carolinas, First Team Sports is your local, full-service dealer. From youth teams to colleges, we've got you covered with team uniforms, staff apparel, letterman jackets, sports equipment, and facility branding. Visit our local store in Greenville or firstteamsc.com. Make First Team your first choice. Looking at the 2A slate now, John. Yeah, Eau Claire will go to Mid-Carolina. Barnwell hosting a solid whale branch team. Manning is on the road against Lake City. Strom Thurmond will host 96. Looking for a bounce back there for the Rebels. I do want to circle back to that Manning game. This is a team, John, that's 8-1. Uh, and one, And I feel like we just have not talked about much at all. Um, playing really good football for Coach Kennedy. They will be tough in the playoffs as they always are. Yeah, if we had a top 10 poll, they would be in it. For sure. Um, just a lot of really good teams at the top in 2A. But they are a great team. Talked about this one on our Conan Games of the Week down in Saluda Friday night. Batesburg, Leesville at Saluda. Two undefeated teams in that game. That'll be fun. Timberland will go on the road against Woodland. That'll That's a, a big game. game. Big for seeding. I think both teams have one loss just to Phillip Simmons, I believe, in that region. Uh, Timberland or Woodland, either one, you know, wants to get a playoff home game or two. They need to win this matchup. Big time game. Kingstreet will be at Atlantic Collegiate. 
Chesterfield hosting Sherall. I believe this is the the battle for the bell. I believe is what it okay. is there. Um, two two you know communities that don't really like each other uh, for sure. But Sherall playing good football, trending in the right direction. You know Chesterfield is taking a a bit of a step back once region play came around after that hot start for them. I think the Braves are a team that you know we were high on them preseason. And our you know I remember talking to them about them in our two yeah. A preview show. Took some lumps early against some big non region teams. They are you know trending in the right direction. I think they're a team to look out for in the. I guess probably lower state to a playoffs. I believe that one seed of that region goes to the lower state. Okay. Definitely a team to look out for there with Straw Braves. Yeah. Burke will host Academic Magnet. North Central will go to Central of Pageland. Andrew Jackson on the road against Buford. East Clarendon will go to Marion. Landrum hosting Chesney. Blacksburg at home against Liberty. Fairfield Central will go to Columbia. Andrews will host Philip Simmons, a good ball game there. Philip Simmons, a team that continues to roll, had a big win over yeah. Timberland last week. We had not talked a ton about them this year as well, but they were playing really good and, you know, kind of a reload year for Coach uh, for Chris Mendig there, losing the two top backs, but the quarterback has really stepped up. The Oriana kids playing great for them. They are rolling right now. Certainly have reloaded. Pelion will host American Leadership and Edisto at home against Lake Marion to wrap up 2A. 2A comments, Drell, from you or the chat. Down to 1A, guys. Looking at the 1A slate. All right, in 1A, we've got all Friday games here in 1A as well. Wagner Sally at home against Calhoun County. Abbeville will host Ware Shoals. McCormick is at home against Dixie. Whitmire on the road against Calhoun Falls Strutter. Lee Central hosting C.A. Johnson. Scotch Branch will get a military magnet. Williston Elko hosting Blackville Hilda after a tough loss for Blackville Hilda last week. They get... Blown off the map. By yeah. Kenner Tyler. Yeah. Um, and we'll have to come back this Friday. I, I don't know, you know, if a game like that, if maybe it's it's better to just get beat that bad instead of like lose a close one at the end, you know, you can just really flush it and move on to the next day. I, I, I don't know. That was a quite a surprise the way that the Hawks got beat. And Wilson Elko had a nice, I think it was a one point win over Wagner Sally last week. They play playing good football there. They've got a solid record for them. Blackfield Hilda, obviously, too much firepower. I think, I think they win this game pretty handily. But man, that 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 loss last week gives me some worry about the Fighting Hawks. It really does. It gives me some pause. Um, and you'll see it when our poll drops. I'm sure you'll see a bit of a, a shake up there in the one A ranks. Yeah, we'll find out more about on Friday um, how they respond there. Rich Spring Minetta will go to Hunter Kenner Tyler after that huge win. Uh, Rich Spring Minetta, a good club themselves. Uh, that'll be a fun ball game there. I mean, HKT is playing great football. They're so big and so physical. You know, their their one loss is to that good Louisville team. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. Davis just told us about the, the defensive line's tough. Run ball a thousand times, you have a long day. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what we kind of talked about. I think I spoke in the previous show where to exploit them, you're going to want to throw the ball so much what Louisville can do. Um, that's not what Blackfield Hill was cut out to do, and they, yeah. they couldn't do it. Um, so they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs, a team that you definitely don't want to play. MJ says, HK, HKT, welcome back to Louisville loss. Certainly, they played great football since then, man. Uh, that team is on a is on a hot streak and play really good football. We'll see Lakeview. Oh, oh, Perry was there at the game. Had homecoming there from the beginning to the end. HKT has a great O line. Yeah, two great backs as well. Um, they are really good, really good football team there for the Trojans. Impressive. Lakeview, they'll go to Green Sea Floyds. Lamar at Louisville at one of our Coney games of the week. Yep. Go back earlier in the program. We'll break that down. MACB will go to Great Falls. Cross is at Baptist Hill. Cross playing really good football, man. Carmelo Jones, what he has done, just the stats he put up this year has been unreal. Seven touchdowns a week, six touchdowns a week. Baptist Hill, you know, Coach Brown, always a well-coached team, a team that we have not talked a ton about this year, but they have play, played solid. they got six wins already. I think Cross, a little bit too much firepower. Coach Wright has been playing really good right now down the stretch. Do you like that Baptist Hill program? They're yes. always – seems like late in the year we're always talking about Baptist Hill. Hannah Pamplico, they'll go to winless Hemingway. Hey, Hemingway crossed the double-digit point threshold last week, John, so – Clap it up for the Tigers. They got another six against Green Sea Floyds. They're at 12 now in the season. All right. There we go. It's, ba it's, ba hot. it's bad that this is something we talk about every year. Yeah. Is like how many points you're going to get. Uh, but I, but I, I, it is what it is for right now for Hemingway. It's so sad. It used to be such a great community. So much talent there. You know, always had awesome basketball teams, especially. Ha hate to see what's happened to the Tigers in that, in that, you know, town right now. Yeah. Hopefully it, it turns around sooner than later. St. John's. Another team winless. They will go to Branchville. That's going to be a tough one to, to get your first win there. Lada at home against Johnsonville. That's a big game, I believe, for seeding in that region. Uh, I believe, yeah, Lada is, is a game up on Johnsonville right now. Lada 
you know, not as good as last year's team, obviously. Johnsonville seems to be kind of figuring out a little bit better right now. They, they obviously – not as good last year either. I think they're kind of trending up. I think the Flashes have a good chance at home, but should be a, or sorry, a good chance on the road, but should be a good, a good matchup. Denmark Olart goes to Bamberg Earhart. I know we had a couple comments earlier about that ball game. Bamberg Earhart, I think they're probably one of the lower state 1A favorites, if not the favorite out of the lower state. Denmark Olar, we know they've got talent. They, you know, they beat Bamberg, I believe it was last year. They beat the teams. I, I think exactly. Bamberg Earhart is not going to overlook them at all. I think the Red Raiders. Coach Crosby, the boys, uh, too much talent right now. I think they win this matchup at home. Yeah, and I, Denmark Rolo is a fun, fun group to watch because they'll come out and surprise you. They, they certainly surprised Bamberg last year. But like, you're right. They're not going to surprise them this year. Nope. And last game of the night in 1A, Allendale Fairfax will go to Hardyville. Drill comments on 1A from you or the chats. Wilson going to the playoffs says Allen. Yes, they've had a really good season. Uh, I believe they're sitting there, well, I think four and five right now. Really nice to see that out of that program. Uh, trend in the right direction. Uh, they have been a fun team five to follow this season. Five and four, excuse me. Yes. That is it for the – oh, hold on. I got I got a two-way comment here for you. Cam says, Jakar and Antonio Hamilton inducted into the Strom Thurmond Hall of Fame this Friday. Cool. Really cool. Two big-time players for them, man, uh, guys that – you know, we're special on the gridiron uh, for sure there. Love to see those guys getting some flowers. Rich Freeman, that is a dark horse, says yeah, Cam. Good. They're a team they're that's, good. you know, put up a fight against some, some big programs. They've got some talent over there for sure. Yeah. Um, they, they certainly do. Courtney can't wait for three-A cool. playoffs. going to be a lot of fun. A division that we thought may have gotten gutted. Maybe the deepest now, actually. Or, yeah. or, or, <laughs> so I want to say this. Most competitive. I about to say, maybe not deepest. Yes, yes, that might be the wrong talent. But, yeah, most competitive might be the right way to put that. They might, I, I don't know. They, they got a lot of good teams, too. Three Ke- Ke- Kelly trying to get us fined, get us thrown off. You, the refs this season. Not, not you know, you know what's that. funny, Kelly? Uh, Drell and I were at a game three weeks ago, um, I would say, and we were talking, and I think maybe Drell made the comment, like, you know, it's been really crazy, Kelly. Like, we've, you know, the refs have been really good this year compared to, you know, if they've been really bad. And, like, maybe two Too minutes later we see a, just an egregious missed call. <laughs> it just seems to have gone downhill from there. Uh, so, so, I don't know. Maybe we just been at good games. But, I mean, you know, there's always going to be complaints. We saw the big issue with the Gaffney-Dorman game last week. We thought the Gaffney guy scored. They ended up calling it a fumble. I, I don't know. Um, it, it's a tough gig. I'll say that. It's a tough job. I don't want to do it. We'll put it that way. And, hey, we got a lot of folks on right now, a lot of folks watching a lot of friends of the program. Hey, if you got Friday nights free, go be a ref. They'll pay you. They, They'll pay they you. They need rest. They need help. Go out and do it. Um, Jarrell, he he may do it if you don't coach a team next year. True. I'd like to get him some stripes. I was just gonna say, John, we went to the Skiza game. I mean, the refs are wearing silk shirts and Skiza balls. It so was diff- different crazy. level of money on wow. that side. I'm telling you. Wow. I guess that's it, why my uncle does skis the referee. Or he <laughs> I don't think he does. Anymore. It was great. Looking now at the skis of slope. We got Lee Academy at Carolina Academy. Hammond at Cardinal Newman. What a huge game this was last year. This year, Cardinal Newman had a tough time, two and seven on the season. Skyhawks continue to roll there at Hammond. Orangeburg Prep at Thomas Sumter. Pinewood at John Paul. Newberry at Oak Brook Prep. Came to military at Northside Christian. I know EJ asked earlier, Northside Christian, eight and one. That long loss just to Wilson Hall playing really good football right now. Northwood at Heathwood Hall. Ben Lippin at Augusta Christian. Cathedral at Kings Cross at Conway Christian. First Baptist at Wilson Hall. St. John's at Bethesda. JDA at Holly Hill. You know, these teams in 1A play twice a lot of times in the regular season. This game is the region game here. The first matchup, JDA won 36 to 18 for the region title. Really loaded teams with, with JDA. You got Load Holt and Void. Holly Hill, you got Souls, Kaiser, Gillum. I think it's going to be a closer matchup than the first time, but I think JDA is still playing a little bit better right now. Even Actually, you know what? I'm taking Holly Hill at home. I'm going to take the Raiders at home. It's going to be a fun game there in 1A. Calhoun at Clarendon Hall, Lawrence Manning at Porter Goud, Hilton Head Prep at Hilton Head Christian, a rivalry there. Another rivalry renewed here. PD Academy going to Dylan Christian, a, a, a matchup that has not been played in a couple of years now. The Golden Eagles playing great football. Dylan Christian not quite at that level. I think the Golden Eagles go to 9-0 and finish out a, a perfect regular season this week. Florence Christian at Trinity Collegiate. Faith Christian at Colin Prep. Thomas Hayward at Beaufort. Andrew Jackson at Patrick Henry. Greenwood Christian at Spartanburg Christian. And Wardlaw Academy at Richard Wynn. Another game that got played earlier in the year. Richard Wynn won 30-16. This time at Richard Wynn for the region title here. I think the Eagles at home a little, little bit too much here. But uh should be a fun 
one A match. We got two great one A, or excuse me, two great eight man games this week. I kept saying one A, it's, it's eight man, but two great eight man games this week. And then our skis game of the week, Dorchester at Williamsburg. Drell, any other comments from the you or from the chat on anything before we go on to the next portion of the program? Yeah, I'm going to put this one. Harry, they definitely play real football. I went to my first Skiza game this past Friday. I mean, these guys get after it. Do they have the depth as some of the, the teams that we see in, in the high school league? No. Uh, but if you want to ask if some of these these high school league teams want to play Porter Gout or Hammond or something like that, I'll tell yeah. you they probably don't. So, yes. Yeah, I, I'll say right now, there's a lot of 1A and even some 2A teams that do not want to line up with some Skiza teams right now. I'll put it that way uh, for sure. But. And it was was it Hammond that gave Gaffney all they, they did. I think it was a fourteen ago? to seven game, I believe, yeah. at the reservation uh, a couple seasons back. So yeah, uh, you know, typically the the skis of guys don't have enough to to hang tight with the bigger boys because of depth and things like that. But the lower levels, some of the schools certainly have enough talent to to, to play with those guys uh, and each maybe, and every week. Maybe the best prospect in the state, skis a guy, Mike Tyler uh, at Hammond, uh, an LSU commit. Uh, stud also honest Conan honest Conan Banny at Heathwood Hall, a Tennessee commit. Yeah, two of them. Got some studs there uh, in the skis of ranks for sure. But drill, shout out to friends of the program. Then we'll look down at our pick 'em and our polls that are new this week. Facing unexpected expenses and need a quick play? A personal loan from Founders Federal Credit Union can help you cover costs and get back in the game. With competitive rates and flexible terms, a personal loan from Founders is the winning play. Whether it's for a big purchase or an emergency, we've got you covered. Visit foundersfcu.com slash personal to get started. Terms and conditions apply. Membership qualification required. Let's start with our Pick'em Contest brought to you by Hannah Engineering. We are nearing the end. You know, typically, John, like I mentioned the show started, this would have been the last week of the regular season, but now we got an extra week. So an extra week to score some points here. But let's look back at the Week 9 leaders, a seven-way tie for first. A lot of nines with Steven, Pat, Corey, Kane, DJ, Brad, and Alex. Some eights as well. John, you and I with eight. Jarrell with seven last week. And a, a tough week, I feel like. Really tough. I mean, when you see a nine as the number one score, you know something's up. Because usually we see somebody with a 10 or 11 each week, but not not week now is a lot of a lot of tough games for sure. And if, then the if, over- someone had an, if someone had an 11 this week, they were a sicko. So I'm glad to see that nine was the top <laughs> score. That's right. And then in the overall, Charlie still leads at 66. Has a two-game lead on Ben right now with two weeks to go. John. You're leading us by a lot. 67. I'm with 61. John at 60. Um, still some, some, you know, a lot of time he made up in these guys. Easily, uh, Charlie or Ben could easily just forget to make a pick one week, and that could really kill you there. <laughs> could really kill you down the stretch. But uh, a lot of fun to do that. Appreciate our friends at Hannah Engineering, guys. We will start a new playoff pick them as well here in two weeks. Make sure you join for that. It's a lot of fun to keep up with. We will not drop the lowest score in the playoffs because there's not the, you know, five no. weeks, but. We are now this. Definitely join us for that. But, Drill, the people want to see it. Let's talk about our polls. Do you want to start at 5A or start at the bottom? What do you want to do? Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's start at the bottom. Let's do that. The 1A and 2A polls. 1A, a lot of shakeup. We've got Abbeville at 1. Louisville jumps up to 2. Bamberg at 3. HKT makes an appearance at 4. Then Lakeview and Lamar tied for 5th. We've got a top 5 matchup, Louisville-Lamar, this week yeah. in 1A. Uh, a lot of, you know, shake up. Blackfield Hilda has dropped out of the poll completely. Um, just don't know what to do with some of those teams, man. Um, a interesting interesting matchup. I, I want to see Lamar and Lewis. I really do uh, to see see how good those guys are. You know, Lakeview is a team that has a great record, but I was doing my research. I was like, I don't know who they've beaten. Uh, yeah. And that kind of yeah. worries me a little Their about the Wild Gators. Hard to pinpoint. Now, we'll say a historic program. A lot of tradition, a lot of great football over the years. So we know they are pretty good, but how good we don't know in 1A. Um, on the 2A ranks, Joe, pop, pop, pop it back up if you don't mind. Bakersfield, Leesville at 1. Barnwell, 2. Saluda jumps up to 3. Fairfield Central at 4. Clinton at 5. Another really tough poll here to come up with because 2A, we've got so many teams. We'll find out a lot about Baseburg and Saluda this week, of course. Um, but... <sighs> Man, there were some other options. Uh, you know, the Strong Thurman's kind of falling off a little bit, but you look at uh, you look at Manning. We talk about Manning could have been in there yeah. possibly. Yeah. They're a good football team. 
two A is going to be fun as we get into the playoffs. Any comments from you, Jarrell, on one A or two A here, or anybody in the chat? Let me see the chat. Let me pull that up real quick. Uh, but yeah, I just Blackfield Hill. That I was surprised. I knew I was going to drop them out, but I was surprised that we all did. They didn't even get any votes. So, uh, but they got boat raced against HKT, and we had to get those guys in there. It's top had five. To, had also, to. two more two A teams I want to mention. Um, Phillips Simmons and Sherall, two more teams that are probably going to win their region. I don't think we've had in our top five all year long. Uh, they're two teams to watch out for, I think, in the lower two A state when that uh, when that goes when that rolls around. Brandon said Sherall could be top five. Yeah, a great point there, Brandon. Um, they're a team, like I said, that kind of got written off with some early losses to to big teams um, like a Marlboro County and, and a River Bluff, and, and I think maybe Darlington as well. I mean, it may have been. Uh, but it played really well once that region play hit, has rolled around. That, that's a Darlington team, Darlington team that's better than what I thought they were. Yeah, when that game happened. Zach says Clinton wins, drops to five. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised how that shook out. I, honestly, it's um, and it's nothing, nothing that Clinton did wrong. Obviously, just you know, a big win from Saluda and some other folks there. They they kind of moved to, moved some pieces around, but they're going to be a tough team, no doubt about it. Yeah, they're only two losses, like you said, they're Brandon to Daniel and Woodruff. Two really good losses to yeah, two teams. really good teams there. No, yeah. no shame in either one of those um, games. They easily could have won that Woodruff game too, honestly. Yeah, but you got to reward Saluda for what they did last yep. week. You know, uh, yep. it's not that Clinton did anything wrong. Just you got to reward Saluda. Yep, I believe three A may have stayed the same. Uh, BHP Mountain View, Loris, Woodruff, Dylan. Just like you still getting a vote as well in three A. These did not change. Uh, yep, no change there. And then four A West Side South Point Daniel. <laughs> South Florence, North Augusta, receiving votes, Hartsville and Wren. Yeah. Uh, 4A is one that we could go probably 10 deep because yeah. I feel like – I I don't want to say that because I'm going to put my foot in my mouth trying to say that. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> 4A is going to be fun as well, man. We got a, a almost a top five matchup, West Side and Wren, almost a top five matchup in, in South Florence and Hartsville as well. Uh, they're in the 4A ranks this week. And then 5A Division two Northwestern, Irmo, Gaffney, Greenwood, Hillcrest – Hannah also receiving votes there. This is a tough one for me, guys. Just uh, with Hannah, Hillcrest, Greenwood, don't really know what to do with them because Greenwood's beat Hannah. Hillcrest hasn't played either one of them yet. Um, so not sure how to mix that, mix and match that up. And then Gaffney with with their tough losses, like do you move them down? Like I, I don't I don't know what to do with that either. Um, so 5A Division II, it was pretty tough for me this week, it felt like. Yeah, I moved Gaffney down in mine. I, I kept him in my top five, but you know, I was thinking I had one, three, four set. Yeah, and I'm thinking, all right, who's going to go in five? And the way that five A Division one, Division two are split, there's like twenty six in one and twenty eight schools in the other, something like that. Uh, there's fifty four total schools. There's just not enough schools um, in, in either division because I'm looking through them and going, well, they're decent, but in my head, I'm like, well, they're not top five. They're not top five. And I just – Yeah, that was – Five teams in Division Two that are better than Gaffney. That's like, how do you – you can't drop Gaffney out. I mean, they're, that's their one loss. I mean, I think they've played with fire. They've played some really close games this year. What, three overtime games this year or something like that? Yeah. But they and I'm sure – I'm sure Chris in the chat tells us to drop him out. Chris, I, well, yeah, I'm sorry. We can't. what do you do it? <laughs> instead. You got to think, too, it looks like an upstate bias in that division, too. But there's no, like, lower state teams really no. in, you know, in division, two. So we had to kind of keep yeah. shuffling those three in that in those spots there. So, um, and then when you go, I almost jumped Spartanburg up to, like, two. I mean, I Spartanburg is playing fantastic football. It's just hard they because are. Sumter and Somerville have played so well this year. Yes, oh, yeah. I don't know, but I don't know if anybody's as you know playing as well as, as Spartanburg is right now. They're they're playing fantastic. Yeah, yeah, the run game, Trenton Lynch and those boys are getting it done offensively. Yes, yeah, so a big five A once again. Drell, it's Dutch Fork, Somerville, Sumter. Who do we have there? Spartanburg's got to be in there. Somerville, Sumter, Spartanburg, four, both five, and that's where it gets tough here because I think and I don't want to say this because I know it's a big game. It's a top five matchup. I don't think in a normal year River, River Bluff is a top five team. I don't think. But this year, with them splitting the two five A's up, they kind of got to be. You know, man took that big loss to Hannah. That dropped them out. Um, you know, we saw Riverbluff play two, uh, three weeks ago against Irmo, and I mean, it, they weren't anything compared to Irmo. It didn't feel like. Uh, so I, I don't know if they're typically a top five team, but this year they're a top five. And hats off to what they've done. They, they bounced back with some nice ones. They got some good playmakers there. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say so, Chris. But yeah, 
5A, it's it's a bit of an odd one this week or this year with it being split um, like it is. But any other comments on our polls from you guys or from the chat? Yeah, I hey and Harry Irma is going to have a chance to make that claim. Um, ooh. And Nathan, you know, and that's I had Clinton. I was giving him a first place vote for the longest time this year, I think, <clears> and then. At one point, I switched to Batesburg. I think Batesburg had the big win over somebody. I made the move. But they are certainly a very good football team. Uh, what worries me about anybody at a 2A, like that upper state is going to be a gauntlet, man. Um, just so many good teams up there with, with Batesburg, Leesville, Saluda, Clinton, um, Strom Thurmond as well. Uh, just a, a lot of really, really talented teams that, in that upper side. Fairfield Central as well. Chester is not going to be an easy out for anybody. It just it's gonna be tough to make it through that for anybody coming out of the upstate, but whoever does, I think we'll have a, a really good shot to win the whole thing. Yeah, and only other thing I wanna yeah, Greenwood, very good program too, or very good team this year. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think the point is to drop Greenwood, but I think we'll see. We'll get a lot of clarity. They play Hillcrest this week. So I mean it'll yeah. be super easy. They drop that game, they're gone. So yeah, I mean the Rams are gonna be the ones that really you know, help straighten this out because they play Greenwood this week and T.O. Hanna next week. So we'll find out real quick between those three where to, you know, kind of how to shake those out here in the next two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and it, it makes it tough with the number of schools there are. So the comparison that I was drawing to myself today, okay, you think about Division One football college level, okay? Our top five is equivalent to, like, the top 40 in FBS football. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're 35 to 40 teams. You're talking about like a Duke, a South Carolina solid team, but it's weird to say, hey, this team's a top five team. Um, but that's just – it's it's because of the number of schools. That's just the way it works out. But yeah, once again, we'll post these polls uh, tomorrow on social media. So, guys, feel free to chime in there with your thoughts. Love to get you guys' opinions on some of these teams. Looking forward to some huge top five matchups this week. Want to shout out, shout out our teams of the week at Saluda, the big one over Sean Thurman, HKT, the massive win over Blackfield or uh, Blackfield Hilda. Yep. And then Dorman, the big win over Gaffney, our preferred home services teams of the week there. Our players of the week brought to you by the Georgia. He had actually had to do four this week. Typically, we had to go four deep. With Camarius Bumar at West Side, Jamarion Fling at Dillon, Jaron Fox at Carolina Forest, and Jaden Martin at Crestwood. I need to find out if Jaden is Javion's little brother. And I'm not sure about that, but he had a huge game for the Knights. He he was in the chat and I, and I want to say yes. Okay, perfect. So you once again, our players leaked by the George Agency. As always, guys, tune in next week about 7:15 here on Facebook and YouTube for our oh great pull. Oh, Drill just popping off on me. There we go. I had that written down. Sorry, buddy, I missed it. Shout out to our Mr. Football finalist announced last week, Malik Clark at Rock Hill, Marquez Henderson at Belton Honey and Path, Shed, uh, Shed Surratt at Gaffney, excuse me, Will Wilson at r &E, and Cutter Woods at Westside. Lots of really talented guys. Shout out to them. That was announced by the uh, Touchstone Energy uh, Bowl North-South game there. Um, put out the Mr. Football finalist. Definitely appreciate that and look forward to seeing who wins that here in about a, a month and a half or so, I guess, now. But, guys, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, slash X, Instagram, YouTube, and more at Moving Chains, M-O-V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S, movingchains.com is our website, podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Um, we'll have our live preview show next Tuesday night, about 7.15 on Facebook and YouTube. Join us for that for week 11. Our recap show will come out Sunday um, on the podcast platforms. We'll have coach interviews, player interviews, Great stuff all throughout our food review Fridays. It's going to be a lot of fun to drop that this week. Some great hot dogs last week. Uh, get your MTC merch. We got some great toboggans, a black and gray toboggan there. Some great Richardson hats. Uh, we got a gray front, a, a black front like you see up there as well. You can email mtcgear.sc at gmail.com. Love to have you purchase some of that stuff here. Or you just email or message us on social media. is fine too. Our T-shirts, a, a nice front. Pocket there with the small logo, large logo on the back. We got a black, a gray, a navy blue, and a uh, pink as well. Some great hoodies, a, a gray hoodie here, same design, front logo, small, big logo on the back. Also have one in kind of this, this ash, lighter, whitish color. So definitely order yours now. Get yours in in time for the playoff stretch. Love to have you guys supporting us to help us make the show better and better. Um John, Jarrell, any final thoughts here on week 10 as we wrap up and get ready for what should be a huge slate of ball games? 
Yeah, I'm ready for these region championships. Uh, can't wait to get down to Saluda Friday. If I hear some chatter about who I picked, I totally understand. I welcome it with open arms. Um, I'm looking forward to a great game and a great atmosphere. Drell, anything from you here on uh, the wrap up the the week ten show? No, we're not. We're not scut- skating by this. Everybody's asking uh, who you guys got winning Mr. Football this year. Ooh. Wait, can Pick- you throw it back up there again? It's Cutter, I, I Will sure Wilson, can. Malik Clark, Marquez, and Shed Surratt as well. You know, from years past. Typically, it has to be um, – Not the political answer, Kevin. We need the real answer. Who, who, wait, who I want to win or who I think should win or who is going to win? I'm just messing with you, man. Just pick a guy. I think the winner is going to be Cutter Woods. Um, I believe Cutter is going to be chosen to win. Um, all these guys are certainly deserving. Honestly, you know, I wish they would have made uh, would have made it 10, 10 deep for the nominees. I mean, we have so many great players across the state. They could have this. Any shit. of these guys certainly could, um, but I think, uh, yeah, Chris, offensive lineman wins. You know, they did last year. We could certainly see back to back. You know, Josiah Thompson, the starting left tackle for the Gamecocks, won last year out of Dylan Shed Surratt, uh, another Gamecock commit, certainly could win it this season. Would not be uh, surprised if that is the case. John, who do you think? Who do you like in this uh, this year's Mr. Football finalist? I am leaning, and I'm going with who I think is going to win, not necessarily who I think should win actually you know what it might be the both it might okay be. okay uh, i think marquise henderson's gonna win it Ooh, Mark, a, a, yeah a clemson commit huh i don't think that's know, gonna t- happen t- in columbia <laughs> i'm going shed surat um but yeah, i like that i think she's like gonna that. win it i love it i love it i love it, it should be a, a lot of fun but as always guys moving the changes brought to you by founders federal credit union Appreciate you guys joining us. As always, looking forward to a great week of football. For Jarrell Hendricks and John Epps, I'm Kevin Thomas. This has been our Week 10 South Carolina High School Football Preview Show here on Moving the Chains. We will catch you guys next week. Get ready for the ultimate South Carolina high school football experience with Moving the Chains. From previews to recaps, we've got you covered. Dive into our expert preview shows, predicting winners and sharing insights. Then join us post game for the thrilling recaps, exclusive interviews, and highlights you won't find anywhere else. Plus, connect with fellow fans on our Friday night spaces on Twitter slash X. No one covers South Carolina high school football like us. Join us at Moving Chains on all social media platforms and visit movingchains.com today.